Thank you so much, Bella, and thank you, Sigalit, for having me this evening. Um, I'm so delighted to have an opportunity to talk a little bit about my work. Um, I have about a 30-minute discussion planned, which has slides and video, um, and I, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to start, I'm going to share my screen with everyone so you can see what I'm seeing, um, and essentially, I'll take you through a little bit about my art practice. So we'll start with a short video. This is a two minute and 22 second video, uh, which tells you a little bit about my artistic process and gives you a little bit about my background. So here we go. I was a corporate mom waking up at the crack of dawn and taking the 6.30 train into the city every day and was named the number one entertainment analyst by Fortune. So I was a very focused individual. I had never planned to become a full-time artist. I started small. I gifted paintings to family and friends and it grew from there. I kept painting all the time. It just the passion grew as the more that I painted. Just basically the canvases kept getting bigger and bigger. Before it was libraries and women's clubs. Now I shoot for museums and galleries. It is a learning curve and I feel like there's always room for improvement. After 17 years on Wall Street and six years in the corporate world, it was something that I naturally grew into and it blossomed and it became now my greatest passion. Paint, paint, paint. <laughs> my career has continued to develop and my aspirations continue to grow as an artist. I love texture. So I wanted to figure out the best ways to bring out the texture in canvas. And I just experimented with this and I loved it. So the process is I put a full coat of the acrylic molding paste on the canvas. And then I use the palette knife to sculpt in shapes. It's almost like, you know, frosting a cake. As I'm creating it, I might see a story coming out in the canvas. What do you see when you look at it? Um, I see a lot of vegetation. I mean, I, I see a lot of kind of fairy tale elements. Certainly a happy place. In terms of my art career, I mean, just the ability to come here and paint every day is such a wonderful gift. Hope you enjoyed that little clip. Um, that was put together by Stick Figure Productions. Um, it's a short little vignette from about a seven minute video, which you can see on my website on my about page. And it was prepared for my Coral Springs Museum of Art solo exhibition that I had last year. Um, so tonight we're gonna be discussing a little bit about my background, how I'm tackling my art practice in the middle of a pandemic, um, I'm going to show you a brief promo video of a virtual studio exhibition that we put together, followed by a longer discussion of all the work that's part of that. Sorry. Uh, oh, goodness. Sorry about that. Um, and then I'm going to close with a brief home art curation video before taking any questions that you may have. So. Here you can see a list of some of the exhibitions I've had over the past year. Um, so painting is something that I did as a child and on and off through my life. And after a fairly tough year, career on Wall Street and in the corporate world, I've now dedicated the last 10 years to paint full time in this studio. All my energy that I used to put into building a leisure and entertainment franchise on Wall Street in equity research is now being channeled into building an art practice. So over the past year, I had about 11 different shows. Three of them were museum exhibitions, two solo, one that I mentioned down in Florida. I also had one out at the Yellowstone Art Museum in Billings, Montana. 
And last summer, I had the pleasure of doing a group exhibition in Mallorca, Spain. This year is very different. All my bricks and mortar shows have been canceled, um, though I'm hopeful that when the world comes back online, I'll have an opportunity to have a solo exhibition down in Washington, D.C. at a gallery featuring my ice cube paintings. And we call that show an homage to Rothko, as you can see that that artist definitely influenced that style of work that I do. And I'll also be having an online show, a virtual show, which actually was planned way before the pandemic happened. Um, and this is an, a show for artists who have a connection to the advertising industry. And a selection of artists, 150 artists will be show, showcasing their work in this virtual Oculus gallery in the World Trade Center. And all the artwork will be for sale through Artsy. Um, hopefully there'll be people there to see it. Here you can see a, a variety of projects that we've been working on over the past few months. So in an effort to try to stay engaged with folks on my, with my work, I've created a bunch with, a, with the help of a, a couple of people, a bunch of videos, um, some that are related to networking in the art world with an art consultant out west. We talk about ways to try to raise visibility for an art practice in these times. Um, the viewing room is something that's currently in the works that I'm preparing. It'll be a thematic show um, that's built with Q&A and video um, and images specially curated for that show. Painting story times are two to four minute videos. I'll share one with you this evening, which take a deep dive into an individual work, talking about the inspiration, the journey, um, the exploration of that particular piece or a series of paintings. Uh, tonight, we're going to be exploring the virtual visit, which is of my studio gallery, and the home art curation business. I'm going to start with a short sizzle, which is about a minute long, which gives you an overview of what we planned in the studio. This is a virtual gallery, what I call a visit. Um, namely, taking original work that's on the walls, as you can see around me, and taking them down virtually and curating a show and putting it, rendering it back onto the walls in a very realistic way using Photoshop. So you'll actually see the before and after shots that we put together um, with a designer named Simone Kurtz, who's extremely talented, who helped me prepare this whole package. So this is a labor of love. This project took us several weeks to pull together. Um, so this is the thousand foot view and then we'll do a deep dive. Sorry about that. Okay, so here we are looking at the first image of the gallery. And this is the first of seven shots that I'll take you through and describe a little bit about the work. Um, here you can see on the long wall, Aurora Borealis. Um, this is a six by 12 foot piece on the right side. And on the left is the Great Deep. And this piece um, is a six by five foot piece. And essentially, um, I paint in different series. So I do about seven different series of works. First are the 
atmospheric series. And Aurora Borealis, Dreamscape, and Shangri-La are good examples of what those atmospheric paintings are. And those are all inspired by natural phenomena, imaginary places, and family adventures. Two of my other series are geometric series, sort of the, the original geometric, which you can see here with the yellow paintings, which we'll get closer to, um, and also my ice cube works. I also have a style called the swirl paintings, which is my newest style of series of paintings, which have a lot of movement, and I do love music, and I do try to capture that in my work as well. And finally, there's the abstract landscape series, which I started as a young child, and I still continue today. So here's a closer look at the Aurora Borealis painting. And this six by 12 foot piece uh, was made on the floor. I actually put all three canvases together and the paint was literally thrown onto the canvas. And I have many different layers of paint that are added with lots of texture using different acrylic type of um, substances, whether it's molding paste um, or gel, all of these different types of materials I use to create a textured piece that has depth and balance. Here is the Great Deep, and this is a combination work of both the swirl and the abstract landscape style. It depicts a fantasy world of the Great Deep Ocean, and a heavily textured piece again using acrylic molding paste and enamel paint to contribute to the texture in the piece. And a lot of effort in this work was put to trying to develop a balance and a contrast to the colors to increase the impact. And this is a newer work. Here's the wall with Aurora Borealis anchoring um, the corner image of the studio. And Fishbowl is next to that. And it is similar to the Great Deep in that it's the same size. It was actually painted simultaneously. And it uses a lot of the same sort of techniques. And next to that is Ice Cube Spring. Ice Cubes are a series that I've developed um, over the past 10 years. And while geometric in style, they have grown to have a very special meaning. So Ice Cubes are supposed to represent a personal challenge. And the gold in the center of the ice cube is the fire from within to overcome that challenge. And all the ice cubes are shown in a dripping state as the challenge melts away. Um, so this particular ice cube, Spring, was recently used, uh, it was featured in a promotional wedding photo shoot at my studio. As you can imagine, it has just such a happy spring-like feel. And to learn more about this particular series, we've done a painting story time totally dedicated just to the ice cube paintings. Here's another gallery shot. This is coming into my studio gallery, uh, which I mentioned to some of you is located in Mamaroneck. So it's actually really well located and it's across the street from the Metro North stop and it's on the second floor of the first building on the strip of Mamaroneck Avenue. And here you can see both large and small works pulled together to create a really welcoming entrance to this space. Sunspots are reminiscent of my ge geometric series. Uh, using oil paint and a palette knife, essentially I layer on the paint and create very textured work, typically with very bright colors, and this set really does radiate sunshine. And I think that a lot of the geometric works are reminiscent of my days on Wall Street and very analytical. They're a lot of up and down motion, side to side motion, but this series too has evolved over the years and um, has changed quite significantly. Here you can see Shangri-La Mallorca. This is a large scale piece in my Shangri-La series and Shangri-La captures an imaginary, peaceful place. Uh, the process of making this painting is very meditative and joyful. And most of this painting is made on the floor 
where I'm putting paint on over a period of time, you'll actually see me creating a Shangri-La work in a later video. Um, but the, the whole goal is to get a perfect blend of color um, and um, balance and the composition and the lights and the darks. So this is something that you work towards over a period of days, weeks, and months. This particular painting was made for my show in Mallorca, Spain, which I mentioned I had as a group show last summer. And the original idea was to take this large work, uh, believe it or not, and cut it into six pieces so it could be wrapped in a tube and brought with me over to Spain. But once it was completed, I didn't have the heart to do that. So I ultimately made another six paintings, um, each 30 by 30 inches that I brought in boxes over to Spain rather successfully. Here you can see the next wall in the studio. This is on the back side of the Aurora Borealis wall, a 15 foot wall. And here I feature a lot of smaller work, which gives you a broader um, understanding of the different types and styles and colors and textures that I like to work with. So here you can see abstract landscapes, dreamscape painting, the blue painting, um, swirl paintings are very obvious where you can see the movement in those particular canvases. Taking a closer look, you can see that the Ray of Sunshine 2 um, is a favorite. I mean, this particular work is a remake of the first painting with the same name, where the first one was strictly made with oil paint. And this abstract landscape here is made with both acrylic and oil. So I've learned to actually use acrylic to build up the texture in the canvas and then apply layers of translucent oil paint to create an overall exciting effect um, as oil can really have an amazing sheen. Abstract landscapes is something that I was really one of the first types of series that I did as a child when I used to copy Monet and Van Gogh type works um, as a young artist uh, when I was around 10, 11 years old. Um, but today I continue to develop these abstract landscapes. It's, it's definitely a staple and something I always come back to. Here you can see three what I call psychedelic ice cubes. These are 16 by 16 inches. They're part of a series of 20 different ice cubes of the same size. Um, I paint these in lots of different sizes and colors, including custom sizes and colors. And they're just a really fun exercise for me. Here you can see another image of the rendering of the studio. And the point here is to show you how we curated this show where you can take paintings that are so completely different, but that can still talk to each other. And you can see the relationship of how these paintings can actually work well with each other. Bubbles is an outgrowth of my Ice Cube series. So this is a, a geometric painting that you can see that clearly has a, a border around it, but using circles as sort of the interior of this particular work, but also shown in a dripping state. Currently, this work is overseas at uh, a variety of exhibitions. Chicka Chicka is a very happy painting. Um, it's a combination swirl and abstract landscape work. And this is a very interesting painting because first it started as a beautiful color field painting and it lacked sort of a direction and a theme. So what I often do in those situations is I photograph the work and then I study it, whether it's at home or um, on my way, going places. So this particular one, I was studying on a train trip from Mamaroneck into the city when a light bulb went off and I realized, oh my God, this color field could easily be turned into the cover of one of my favorite children's books, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, which was a favorite story that I used to read to my children when they were little. And here's the cover, and you can see the different dots which are emulated in the painting around the edges, and of course the big flower or tree and different elements around that. Um, try to capture that really fun, exciting story. Here's a dreamscape painting. This is a dreamscape number seven. Um, this was recently done, again, with oil and acrylic, where the originals were mostly all oil painting. And 
again, layering the acrylic to create a great, exciting base to then build up um, and create the atmosphere of the beautiful ocean and its intimate relationship with the sky, which is something that I've loved um, throughout my life and through all my travels. Here you can see the development of the Dreamscape series in different incarnations. So this room was all dedicated to Dreamscape works and this was at the Carl Springs Museum of Art. In fact, the painting straight ahead is a six by 10 foot piece, which is the first large scale work that I did as an artist. And this particular show was very exciting. It took me two years, over two years, to prepare all the work for this show. Um, it's in six different rooms um, around the museum. You can see the works, how each one had to be anchored by a different large piece. The pink one on the left is my first Aurora Borealis painting that I ever did. And Moonstone is the uh, monochromatic painting, a swirl style painting. And several other works are here many of which I've created painting story times to give a little bit more insight into. So I thought I'd share with you the one that I released today, which is the sixth episode in my painting story time series. Um, this one is dedicated, it's a three minute and 45 second video, um, and it's dedicated to the Dreamscape and Shangri-La series. And you'll find out why there's a poster of Barbara Streisand <laughs> showing uh, momentarily. Today's painting story time features two of my atmospheric series, Dreamscape and Shangri-La. While abstract landscapes have always been a staple of my art practice, these two series are distinctive. Both series are born out of inspiration from the captivating earth, sea, and sky. I collected colors and shapes through the years, which ultimately define my art today. Dreamscapes embody my love for the ocean in all its glory and the infinite number of ways that it can be captured against a changing sky featuring hazy tones like blues, pinks, and purples, and iridescent pigments like pearls and metallics, dreamscapes depict a graceful exploration of the sea via highly textured patterns, dramatic marks, and cool colors. Shangri-La is a mystical, imaginary dreamland where the viewer is transported to an explosion of gentle colors reminiscent of fallen blossoms, a gathering of petals, and bright skies. Growing up, I was surrounded by my mother's love for bright colors. We had a Kelly Green kitchen and a very special green flower print on the family couch. Notably, the same fabric that was used in a Barbara Streisand film called On a Clear Day. I believe it was this imagery that stuck with me as I developed my own aesthetic, as the patterns of blossoms in greens, yellows, pinks, purples, and blues helped inform my view of Shangri-La years later. Shangri-La has become a comforting place for me as it not only grounds me in nature's beauty, but reminds me of a nostalgic time of being at home as a child. The iterative process of creating a Shangri-La painting, layering and finding a balanced blend of colors and textures, becomes a meditative and peaceful exercise, hopefully leaving the viewer with a calm and harmonious feeling. Both the Dreamscape and Shangri-La works vacillate between oil and acrylic paint and are made with brushes, palette knives, or acrylic and enamel paint thrown on a canvas with various techniques. Whichever the vehicle, these works aspire to capture the beauty of nature in all its rhythm and spontaneity. While both Shangri-La and Dreamscape paintings have been showcased in several exhibits over the years, Dreamscape 5 now resides in the permanent collection of the Coral Springs Museum of Art.
hope you enjoyed a closer look at the Dreamscape and Shangri-La series. And please stay tuned for more painting story times and visit Jill Critic Fine Art on Instagram or my website to explore more paintings. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. Oops. Here we go. Uh-oh. Sorry about that. Silly. Okay, sorry about that. Um, here we are back at the studio. This is the corner that we devoted to ice cubes. And you can see here is Ice Cube Night Blue 2. So this is a, one of the most recent ice cube paintings that I've done. It's obviously with turquoise, gold, red, and black. And it will be featured at my upcoming show in Washington, DC, hopefully quite soon. Um, and it's also in a major corporate installation in Times Square at the moment in New York City. Our final shot for the studio, you can see here on the side, I have a double hung window. So I have paintings that are showcased inside the space, as well as special lighting that's in place so that the paintings can be seen at night outside the window. And featured here are Translucence and Taking Flight. These two paintings, six by five foot pieces, were both made for my Yellowstone Art Museum show in Montana, uh, featuring the earth tones. And these are classic swirl paintings where you can see, everyone will see different things in these works. I mean, I intentionally made something that looks like a G clef in the bottom left corner of Translucence on the left side. Um, and you could possibly see a butterfly flying in the top quadrant. But what's interesting about Translucence is I was able to take the background and make it critically important and just as important as the foreground. So this was a breakout swirl painting for me. And it's the reason why I keep developing this series is to try and push the envelope with each particular rendition. And here you can see them installed at the Yellowstone Art Museum um, on book, book ending Orchid in the middle, which is an outgrowth of my ice cube paintings. A couple of other shots from the Yellowstone Art Museum. You can see abstract landscapes that were created on the right side, Montana Hills 1 and 2, specifically for this exhibition, Dance of the Caterpillars, which has a painting story time all about this particular painting. The children who came through this, this exhibition absolutely loved this piece as they all would find different characters and um, items in the painting. And it was really a sight to behold to see them enjoy the work. And finally, from the Yellowstone Art Museum, these I call the trout series. So my, for those of you who know me know my husband and son are huge fishermen. Uh, my son is a, um, a, a fishing captain down in Miami. And he always told me that my paintings would be perfect for creating simulations of what fish look like. And once I got this show out in Yellowstone, it made perfect sense because the pristine rivers are chock full of these magnificent trout. And here I tried to capture a rainbow trout, a brown trout, a brook trout, and a cutthroat trout, um, the belly of these beautiful fish. And the museum was so enthralled with these paintings, they've actually decided to put them in their permanent collection, which was really special. Here I am at the Yellowstone with uh, another Aurora Borealis painting, um, six by 12 foot piece. So to close, I'm gonna show you a very brief home art curation video. This is a 42 second video and it, it's a marketing promotional tool that shows you how easy it is to get art suggestions for your home remotely, uh, which we obviously be thrilled to help you do. Um, so, Anyway, I hope you enjoy this, and then I'll be delighted to open it up for Q&A.
concludes my presentation. Um, I am going to, here's my contact info and please let me know if you'd like to be added to my mailing list and if you can follow me on Instagram. Um, and I hope you have an opportunity to check out my website.